And a very good morning to you. It's just gone six o'clock. It's me, James Max, with you till 6.30 here on Talk TV, where we're live from the Talk Radio studios uh, this Wednesday, the 8th of February. Still to come, we turn our attention to the papers, the front pages, and the stories making the news today. Uh, we'll be joined live in the studio by Paul Britton, leading criminal defence lawyer, finding out his views and also the stories that he's picked out from the papers. Plus, we continue our conversation about this. God could be going gender neutral instead of he, him. It could be they them. The General Synod, they'll have to agree the change, but how should they vote? The telephone number is 0344 499 1000. We'll take more of your calls in just a few minutes. So, we turn our attention to the papers. Paul Britton, our leading criminal defence lawyer, joins me live in the studio. Paul, good morning. Very good morning, James. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you so, for me. Uh, it's a day when I, I, it's not that I've ignored what's going on in Turkey, it's just that from a, a discussion point of view, what can one say other than have uh, this is a natural tra tragedy, thousands of lives have been lost. Um, probably tens if not hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced. The damage to the country, the damage to the infrastructure, the damage to people's lives, uh, the human tales of tragedy are um, beyond enormous. Um, and it is covered, of course, by all the papers. Um, natural tragedies and disasters occur. We, well, that's right. I, this isn't the first um, earthquake. You think we had the one in China in 2008, 90,000 people lost their lives. Haiti, 2010, over 220,000 people. Before that was one in Indonesia and Pakistan. Mm. You're talking about a million people died from earthquakes in the last 10, 20 years. And of course, tectonic plates, the way they move, uh, they can be incredibly destructive. We know that some uh, forms of construction hold up better, uh, but we also know that if, uh, like this particular uh, quake, it happens closer to the Earth's surface. I mean, 11 miles doesn't sound as if it's that close to the surface, but in, in, um, uh, it, you know, in, in terms of these particular incidents, it is. Uh, it can be hugely destructive. I suppose the story now becomes one of human rescue and it also becomes of international help and aid. It always does and there's already massive campaigns going to raise money to send out um, food and supplies, medical supplies um, the, to the people that most desperately need it. The, the temperatures in, in Turkey at the moment are around 7 degrees Celsius, so it's, uh, it is a problem and they're predicted to fall further, which may impact on, on the death toll. Uh, it, it may indeed. Um, we see also, uh, front page of the Times, uh, they cover that life and death under the ruins. Uh, that um, story also covered by the Daily Telegraph. But also, the Daily Telegraph front page met rapist's lenient sentence to be reviewed. The prison sentence handed down to the rapist policeman David Carrick yesterday is already under review after the Attorney General was inundated with complaints that it was too lenient. Um, this is the 48-year-old uh, former Metropolitan Police officer given 36 life sentences, told that he would be uh, eligible for p parole in 30 years, he'll be 78. This is such a complicated story on so many different levels because on one hand uh, you have a look at the individual, the catalogue of crime is just astonishing. But then also the undermining of the Met and the fact that the Met Police Commissioner, yes he apologised, but it wasn't the greatest apology in the world, um, when it comes to trust that the Met is going to deal with their own, when it comes to trust that the Met is going to deal with uh, whether it's rape or indeed uh, these sorts of cases effectively, uh, it would appear as if people have lost trust. I mean, James, as you said, there's so many facets to this story. Um, as, as a criminal defence lawyer, I could, I could go on for half an hour on this subject. Um, I have seen cases where leniency, I don't believe leniency works at all, and it even starts at ground level with police. I've had criminals that get away with small things. Starts off with petty theft, then a push and a shove, and then a stab, and then they're setting fire to people's cars and murdering their partners. And only then does it get serious. Leniency in the early stages, words of advice, a slap on the wrist, a caution, it doesn't stop these people feeling they're going to get away with it, get away with it, and it gets worse. And that only gets worse when it comes to sentencing. You start giving lenient sentences. I mean, I think I was on the show with you last month and we were talking about um, the, the cells, the number of cells that are available in prisons. They're so few that now police stations are giving up their cells to incarcerate people that are being sentenced. And, and I suppose... It to my mind, 
the police almost have to be firmer than the rest of society in the sense that we expect a certain kind of conduct and behaviour. If you, we are policed, if you like, by consent. That's right. If we do not have the consent to believe that our police service or force is going to be effective, that you can trust them, that they are going to be uh, fair and even-handed, that they are going to be professional and also that they're going to do their job properly. Having been the victim of um, a burglary where they were so keen to tick the boxes that they'd been, they'd seen and then they closed the case, mm. that, you know... And they said, oh, yes, you know, we know that criminal gangs are operating in this area and we've seen a pattern of it. It's just like, OK, well, the, come on, where's... Where's get the police on with it? in? Yeah, where's, where's the, the police, police in? And also, when we talk about, oh, yes, there's CCTV and all this sort of business, CCTV does not, in my view, prevent crime. No. What prevents crime is a presence. If, if criminals know that police are on the street and they could be activated quickly, um, then although it may be a wasted resource to have people you know, pacing the streets, up and down, being there, being present. I want to see people on a regular basis. I want to see the same people on a regular basis, and I want to see visibility. You do not see police except, uh, you know, either sat in cars or where they've double parked on a double yellow outside a coffee shop. It, it, to my mind, we have lost the sense as to what the police are there to do, and of course there are great police officers who do incredible work. But there are also police officers who are corrupt. There are police officers who are taking backhanders. There are police officers who are not doing their job effectively. And there are police officers who are undermining the service and the badge, if you like. Yeah, I, th I think there's, there's not enough police. There's no good having these community support officers. They're too restricted. They need to have more police on the streets. I mean, that undermined it. That, that was just a cheap shot to say that policing isn't all of these things. Because I would have thought that the eyes and ears of, you know, even the smallest element is what you need. And when you have PCSOs who, are, you know, they couldn't get into the regular police no. force uh, <clears throat> because they're, they're either the wrong height, the wrong weight, the wrong something else. And, and guess what? You know, a certain level of fitness might be required. But a dare, certain but level can you of dare strength. say that? I mean, no, are we going to end up with... No, but a certain level of fitness and a certain level of, of uh, strength, yeah. you could be... Short and strong, by the way. You can yeah. be tall and strong. Uh, you can be... You can you be can, female and strong. <laughs> you can be female and strong, you can be male and strong. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't... I, I agree that we had to um, get the gender balance right because, yeah. uh, you know, female uh, policing is as important as male policing in the sense that when you are dealing with many issues that have mm. nothing to do with, you know, running down the street and catching a criminal, but there are different people for different jobs. That's right. And no, I don't understand why we've we're, why we've left that, but also why we haven't focused on what are the what are the core personality traits that are absolutely essential to policing? Honesty, integrity, all of those things, and yet yeah. they seem to be absent. Uh, meanwhile, front page of the Daily Express: distressed call, then school head and daughter shot dead. Uh, this is a, such a tragic story. The head teacher at Britain's top private school. Um, she made a call to her sister minutes before she was shot dead by her husband. This is what seems to be uh, emerging here and what they're reporting. Um, goodness only knows what was going on behind closed doors. It, it does once again beg the question, how on earth can somebody get a hold of a firearm? I, I mean, that that is a good question. Um, the I mean, I'm thinking a bit more from a criminal side, and th th these things don't just happen overnight. There must have been signs before this. And what is sad when you know my firm does a lot of divorce work, and these sort of stories again, this is about the leniency. When you let them get away with it and get away with it, you know, someone's been shot now. I don't think he woke up and thought he's going to shoot his wife. And isn't it again part of our problem that very often people will either report or maybe they won't report because mm. they don't believe it's going to be solved? Domestic violence can be incredibly serious behind closed doors. Um, time it can't and time be underestimated again. how serious it can be. And also, it can't be underestimated how serious the lack of action mm. when the signs are there. That's right. And the slightest things. I mean, it's people might say, oh, you know, it's OK if he says you're a little bit fat or don't wear that tonight, honey, or something like that. But it's, you know, the, the occasional comment is fine, but when it becomes very regular and it starts causing you to change your behaviour, stop seeing certain people, your friends or your family, stop wearing certain clothes... Then that can move into the... Serious alarm bullying. bells need to start ringing in your head that you need to speak to someone.
because it will escalate. It doesn't just stop, it gets worse. Uh, monstrous, uh, front page of The Guardian, rapist ex met officer jailed for life after years of attack, but also father's agony amid the ruins as the quake death toll passes 6,200. Absolutely tragic picture on the front page of uh, The Guardian here, where you have um, a mess at Hansa clings to the hand of his daughter. Uh, who died after Monday's earthquake. It's absolutely tragic. Uh, the Daily Star, Britain in grip of chuckle crisis. Apparently we're not able to laugh anymore. 42% can't remember the last time yes, they laughed. Uh, listen, it, it, I'm really sorry, but if you don't listen to this show, then, you know, your life is lacking laughter. This show, there's always a laugh. I just wonder where these people are from, because I don't think the day goes by where I don't have a laugh. Well, yeah, but behind the glass... You're making me looking... laugh now. <laughs> Looking behind the well, I'm hilarious. Uh, <laughs> looking behind the glass, I mean, Dave, the producer, <laughs> has never heard such nonsense as he look he, as he listens to my drivel on a daily basis. But you could get a poll to say anything, and that's probably what I always work on the basis. Seventy six percent of all statistics are made up, and if you're Owen Jones, it's a hundred percent. Anyway. Um, that's a, a reference to something else that happened yesterday. But that's another story. 